Hi, welcome to another podcast of the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. The Global Network was created in 1992 to prevent the arms race from moving into space. You can support the show by clicking on the like button and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And also check out our website at spaceforpeace.org. We thank uh, Global Network board member Will Griffin for doing all the tech work to make this show possible. Our guest this time is anti-imperialist activist Heinrich Bucher from Berlin, Germany. We're going to talk about his country's current position on the U.S.-NATO proxy war on Ukraine. Welcome to the show, Heinrich. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Glad, glad to have you. Um, please tell us a bit about yourself and the peace work you do in Berlin. Also about your current legal legal case. You were charged with a crime for speaking out against Germany giving weapons to Ukraine. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm running here in Berlin, in downtown Berlin, very central, close to the Alexanderplatz, a cafe, an anti-war cafe. Since 2005, I opened it, and uh, it has become like a place to a meeting place for anti-war activists. For a lot of tourists come here, regulars, uh, artists, and uh, we are open like five days a week, uh, mostly from uh, after six o'clock in the evening uh, to the early morning hours. And uh, yeah, it has been a place where alternative media views are represented and uh, we have a lot of discussions and we have a lot of uh, music events i do a jam session in the basement every friday it's called peace with russia and uh, we are welcoming the people to to come and engage in discussions and debates uh, my personal personal position about the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine is that I'm in full support of the Russian side of the Russian positions. And uh, I make that clear also to all people who enter the cafe. But then also I'm pointing out that there are different views in the cafe, which I also accept and uh, I'm willing for to open up discussions uh, with anyone who is like who has a different opinion different position on the conflict and uh, yes and my position on this legal case now is actually the same this whole thing came about when i was invited by the berlin peace coordination to an event uh, at the soviet memorial for the victims of the second world war uh, the Operation Barbarossa, when in 1941 the German fascist army was attacking the Soviet Union, causing a lot of uh, many, many millions of victims finally. And uh, I was speaking about that and I was speaking about the, 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 the cooperation of the, the nowadays German government with basically these circles of anti-communist, quasi-fascist Nazi collaborators in the Ukraine in the 40s with the German army and uh, was talking about all these places in the Ukraine that um, uh, like praising these people, these Nazi collaborators by names and by with monuments and avenues and all these things that are happening there that are like so shameful in my view that the Germans again would support this kind of policy now and support this uh, regime in Kiev doing all these horrible things they 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 are doing and promoting and um, just a disgrace. So I was accused by this German uh, lawyer who was working for this uh, big uh, law firm Ernst and Young in Berlin, and uh, he accused me of basically echoing the the Russian propaganda, Putin's 
arguments and and uh, kind of disturbing uh, the public opinion about this whole thing. And this went then to the Amtsgericht Tiergarten, which is the lowest level in the in the court system here, and they. Uh, then issued a, a, a fine of uh, 2,000 euros against me, which we now kind of uh, countered. My lawyer, or our lawyer, has uh, rejected that, and so it's now on the way to a, to a higher level. And uh, yeah, and and I'm all out for it. I will reject these these claims on every level, and uh, hopefully the thing is going up. And uh, we are able to to fight on and uh, reject it because I'm I'm fully in support of the Russian position and of the Russian government. Like many people here in Germany, anyway, we have like a okay, it's a minority, but we have many people who support Russia in this. Yeah, moment, right. Well, obviously. good luck with that legal uh, case. Uh, Germany has been in the news a lot lately uh, for giving tanks to Ukraine, but also due to comments by the Green Party foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, who declared that Europe was at war with Russia. She has since withdrawn uh, the words, but the damage from them still remains. Could you briefly comment on that? Yeah, our foreign minister, she is like uh, uh, kind of a little bit uneducated. I don't know what she is, but she was making this claim. She was basically saying uh, we declare war on Russia. Then uh, since then, she pulled back a little bit on that, but she never said sorry for it. Uh, the people in the government also did not say sorry for what she said. Uh, and uh, I think this is also outrageous in this whole context of the war, but it's going along this, this uh, positions that all the other parties also have, like the Christian Democrats, the, the, the Social Democrats, the Liberals, and her party, the Green Party, which is considered now by some people to, to, to be the war party, actually, a warmonger party. And, um, uh, yeah, I think it's it's uh, ridiculous. Recently, she also did a claim. She talked about that Putin should turn around 360 degrees on his position. Uh, and the whole thing is uh, getting more and more ridiculous if it wouldn't be so dangerous and, and uh, outrageous to begin with, you know. Yeah. So the only party now who is like, going against this mainstream positions is... Actually, some people was in the left party, uh, not a, not many though, and uh, also a large majority in the alternative for Germany party. Like they are considered to be right populists, and they have a lot of strange comments on 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 foreigners and stuff. But I think on that thing, they are they are honestly they are demanding immediately. Uh, negotiating with with Russia and uh, to stop the war, and I think they are honest on that point. Although I reject them on all other kinds of issues. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, recently, Pulitzer Prize journalist Seymour Hirsch released a blockbuster article about how the Biden administration was responsible for the terrorist attack blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines. How are the German people reacting to this story? Yeah, that is uh, like a very important story that uh, Mr. Hirsch brought out there. And uh, in the mainstream media, again, this is like almost like considered to be kind of a conspiracy theory. Like it's an expression they throw around now, like, very, very often. And uh, to my knowledge, the only mainstream paper that is kind of reporting in a different way about it is the Berliner Zeitung. It's like run by, by a couple that is actually from East Germany and is like kind of very wealthy. And they kind of have uh, 
different versions, perspectives on this whole issue. They they show and they were bringing a long interview with Sam Hirsch and uh, were supporting his claims. Uh, and he himself also has come out in the meanwhile and, and talking about that he will come up with some more details about the case. And it looks like the Biden uh, government uh, did start on this issue already way before the war started. And uh, I think there's a lot of reason to believe that Sam Hirsch is, is uh, actually right on this. And uh, he is also claiming that this has been the, the, the biggest environmental disaster uh, that was caused by this what he calls the terrorist attacks by the by the by the U.S. and uh, I think we have to believe that also because the, the it's the biggest methane methane output in the Baltic Sea uh, and basically an ecocide on 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 a violent term, you know, like very outrageous event. Yeah, methane the, the largest methane release in the history of the earth, as exactly. uh, according, according to the United Nations. As I read the other day, Seymour Hersh saying that uh, he's got more to report on this story. He said, right now we're just on first base, so stay tuned. I also heard him yesterday uh, in a video talking about the, the shooting down of balloons by the United States. And he told the story about the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, one of their weather balloons was shot down by the U.S. military. And Hirsch reported that the balloon was actually paid for by the federal government in a contract with the University of Alaska. So mm -hmm. the United States is just like gone crazy here uh, with everything that it's doing. It's just ridiculous. Uh, moving on to another question, how has the shortage of oil and natural gas and the rising of inflation impacted life across Germany these days? Yeah, here in Germany, I mean, and first we had a very mild winter so far, so the, the, the energy supply is still kind of stable, although the prices have kind of skyrocketed. Uh, same as the inflation uh, has gone up very much. Uh, but then again, Germany is in a special situation because in Europe itself, Germany is still like, uh, we are kind of like very content about our situation here, whereas in other countries in Europe, the situation is much more dire and the people are much more suffering. So we are like kind of okay for the moment, but prices have increased a lot. Also, when you go shopping, you feel it. Uh, the prices are very are rising very much. And uh, the middle class and also the poor people are suffering. Energy prices are going up. And now we have the situation that we actually buy uh, this LNG gas from other countries uh, for kind of ridiculous prices. Uh, the US especially is is uh, exporting a lot to Germany and uh, the prices are kind of ridiculous and the environmental uh, effects and, and consequences are also very extreme. And uh, I think the whole thing is like ridiculous. The sanctions actually don't work. They don't work against Russia the way they probably planned them to work. Actually, it's like shooting ourselves in the foot. And uh, and the whole situation is kind of acknowledged now also in the mainstream media, but they're going forward with this policy, this kind of sanction policy, which is kind of a war already. Uh, in the first place is being pushed and pushed and pushed. And now they even talk about introducing sanctions against China more. And uh, it's it's uh, kind of mind boggling to to talk about it and to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. The LNG, I, I understand that uh, the United States 
shipping LNG to Germany is charging Germans four times the cost that the Americans pay for LNG. Is that true? Yeah, the prices are very high. Plus, also they have to build these uh, these big terminals to to unload uh, the gas and uh, to kind of uh, uh, get it out of this uh, state, this cooling uh, condition they have it in on the on the on the ships. Yeah. And the whole thing is getting outrageously expensive and also environmentally it's it's a disaster as well you know right and um, i think this is a consequence of this uh, kind of crazy sanctions they introduce him you just mentioned the also the demonization of china the way that russia has been demonized and it looks like the west us and nato uh, NATO wants to become a global alliance. NATO is moving into the Asia Pacific region, signing up countries like South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand as partners. And, uh, the, and the U.S. military is talking about having two wars at the same time with both Russia and China. I mean, this is pure insanity. Uh, are people in Germany uh, concerned about that, that their government is going to sign up for another war? Yeah, in, in a way it looks uh, it's going to, it might end up in another war, but at the same time, I think it might also end up in a, in a super, super cold war where you have like a really uh, fencing off strategy against these countries first russia and then also maybe finally china and uh, that we might come into a into a situation where the west is basically shutting off more or less completely from these two countries in the long run and uh, that is a big problem i i tend to think more about this Cold War being a real possibility. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the opinions on that are, are, are diverse and, and different, you know, but uh, I think that is a big danger. And now just recently, they just picking up on the Chinese, uh, offering this kind of uh, talks about peace that they are preparing on. The Chinese foreign minister has been in Munich at the security conference, and now there are also theories uh, that they might have already sent weapons to Russia, which is also a kind of, even if it would be real, this would be like a ridiculous claim because the US is doing it in the first place, arming yeah. the to the T's. Exactly. And, um, so the claim is, uh, but it's real. They, they're really working on that. Although large parts of the German business community are not so happy about it, it looks like, because they are still investing in China and they still try to to bring more connections about in order to make that sanctioning of uh, China a little bit more complicated or different you know, or difficult. Let's move on to another question. Uh, how many American troops are currently deployed in Germany? Yeah, that is uh, a number that is very difficult to to get by. According to some U.S. sources, like especially from the Ministry of Defense, or some people call it the military, the, the, the Department of, of uh, War, they are talking about uh, numbers of uh, something like 35,000 soldiers who are stationed here, and uh, plus a lot of uh, civilians supporting them. And uh, which is actually the largest uh, troop contingent in Europe that is based in Germany. So uh, Germany is actually one of the countries that is most uh, populated by U.S. military personnel, which has been also kind of uh, uh, there have been more soldiers sent to Germany in the last two years, you know? Yeah. Uh, is the United States 
uh, essentially running the German government? Has Germany become a colony of the United States? Yeah, I don't agree with that view. I think the Germans are uh, very, very active uh, conspiracists uh, of this U.S.-led policy. So you could call them in some ways maybe a U.S. vassal, vassal like a lot of people do. But uh, at the same time, I think if the German governments would say, no, stop this, and they would uh, just back out of this uh, crazy policy, then the whole thing would stop at least for a little while, you know. But yeah. they are not willing to do that. They don't uh, want to change their positions. They are openly, uh, aggressively supporting the U.S. position on it. And uh, that makes them, in my view, very much a culprit or culprit in this uh, whole uh, aggression against Russia. Yeah. And... Uh, we only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, let, let me ask you this last question. Um, the uh, German uh, Russia phobia that seems similar to what happened before World War II, why is it so important for Germans to stand away from that, to step back from that? Uh, participating in this anti-communism and Russia phobia. Yeah, I think that it is very important because in the first place you say, a lot of people say uh, peace in Europe is only possible with Russia. No? So this is a saying a lot of people were, were saying that before, especially like people around Willy Brandt and people in the Social Democrats party in the, in the 70s and uh, I think this is now contradicted by this stupid policy of the German government that is uh, basically also a repetition of Russophobia in Germany that was present already in the late 19th century during the Kaiser uh, uh, in, uh, at the end of the Second World War and then again in 1940s, 30s, 40s, when the when the Nazis were pushing these ideas to attack the Soviet Union, there have been these ideas, these kind of networks, these kind of uh, groups who were openly pushing to slice up Russia, to take their energy sources, to get at their resources, to get their their fertile grounds uh, in all these three. Uh, time periods, you know, and I think this has been going through the German history all the time, although a lot of people opposed it, like especially nowadays, like in the east of the country, but there has been this very violent, aggressive Russophobia around in Germany for a long, long time. And um, I think this we have to see also in the context of these claims that Germany is like kind of uh, just following the U.S. because they have to do that because they are getting blackmailed or whatever these theories are, which I, I strongly uh, repent and and uh, deny. I think Germany is really uh, uh, directly responsible for this aggression against the, the Russian uh, government and the Russian population and the, the before against the Soviet Union and we have to face the facts and we have to step away from this policy and we have to show resistance to it and we have to stand up for peace and truth and uh, against this sanction policy that is also like already a, a way of waging war against many, many countries in the world, by the way, against Venezuela, against Syria, against Yemen, against all these countries, China now maybe coming up, Russia all the time. And uh, we have to uh, stand up to this policy and and back away from it and have to speak up for truth and for conciliation and for negotiations and for all these kind of things that especially the left and the anti-imperialist uh, demand for a long, long time. And uh, I think this is very important. By the way, I'm also participating in a, in a, in a, in a, in an event that is going on for three years already in the center of Berlin at the Brandenburg Gate. 
run by Latin American uh, or South American groups, progressive groups. We are supporting governments in uh, uh, in Latin America, and we are always voicing our our, our demands that we are pro Russian and pro Chinese and supporting also these progressive movements in Latin America. We are a group of international activists here from Peru, from Bolivia, from Brazil, from many different countries, from Cuba. And I think this is also like a very uh, strong voice that is coming now from, from these countries in support of Russia. And we are presenting, we are representing the majority of the world community in this multipolar world that uh, many people talk about now and we have to stand up for these people and to demand multipolar world against the war. Yes, very good point. Uh, 80% of the world population live in countries that are not uh, opposing Russia and in fact, they are supporting Russia. You know, the United States and NATO likes to talk about we have the world on our side, but it's not true. Uh, the majority of the population of the world live in countries that are supporting Russia and China, as you say. Uh, we have just a minute or two left. Do you want to make a closing comment to people that are listening? Yes, I think we, again, to just repeat myself, we have to stand up to this crazy policies of the West, which is actually uh, uh, kind of supported by this position the Western world is in. They're standing against the wall, uh, the, against the wall, and they try to maintain their, their uh, rule of the world, their power on the world. And uh, Germany is involved in this policy. The whole NATO is like basically, I would call it like, almost like a criminal network of people with bases all over the globe uh, doing this war on terror, this drone war, and all these uh, regime change attempts. And they have toppled many, many governments in their history already. And we have to come up to grips with this reality and stand up against it and uh, voice our concerns against it. And I think that is uh, what I would say as a closing point in this discussion, which I very much appreciate that you have invited me to this show. And uh, I, I wish that we all together can succeed. Although I'm a little bit pessimistic about what is happening here in the West in the next year. So I think we're going to end up in a, in a very dire position. Well, thank you so much, Heinrich. Uh, I really appreciate everything you said. I wish you again the best of luck with your legal case. And uh, as I like to say to people these days, keep paddling. Keep paddling as best you can because uh, we need everybody right now to stand up, to speak out, and to uh, make sure that we don't go into nuclear war uh, because that's the where that's where it's heading. The way the United States and NATO are talking. So thank you all for watching another edition of Space Alert. We'll do another show soon with a movement leader from a different part of the world. Until then, good luck to you all, and please get organized. <laughs>